Hello guys, welcome to our fourth video tutorial on QGIS. Today we are going to look at uh, how to work with uh, or interact with the PostGIS databases uh, using QGIS. Uh, and particularly we are going to use uh, Postgres SQL uh, PostGIS uh, server. So we'll uh, begin with uh, downloading the Postgres SQL from postgresql.org. Well, this is how the site looks like. So you proceed with the download and you can download for your preferred uh, operating system. In this case, you are working with Windows and uh, we'll uh, be downloading the latest stable version at the time of this recording, which is uh, Postgres SQL version 13. And uh, there is this link up here, return download the installer. So we'll just uh, click on it. And it brings us to a list of a uh, page where they have listed all the versions and uh, the operating systems. So one thing to note is that from Postgres version 10.15 onwards, uh, there, there, uh, as you'll note, is that there is not, we do not have 32-bit, uh, do not have 32-bit versions for uh, Windows and uh, uh, they see i mean the product or the de development for the 64-bit uh, ended uh, with the postgres version 10 so that's why we have these uh, not applicable so this is the download page you can click on the download uh, i've already downloaded my copy so i won't uh, uh, dwell on the download just minimize and go to my installer so this is a installer, this is how it looks like. It's uh, somewhat above, slightly above 200 uh, megabytes. So I'll just proceed in installing. So it will launch a wizard uh, for installing the database uh, server. And yeah, this is how it looks like. So we'll just proceed the default installation path and uh, these are the components, individual components, so I'll just leave it as it is. And then you also have the data directory. You can configure your, where you want the, your data to be stored for the databases. So for the password, I have to put some password there. So I've uh, added my password for Postgres. And then the port, I'll leave it as default as well. And I'll click next for the this is the language or the locale that I uh, prefer so I'll leave it as default uh, so these are the options these are the options that we have uh, selected you can use it to ensure that you have uh, configured the installation uh, components uh, as you wish or uh, as it's required so just proceed by clicking next and then it will start installing so while it's installing uh, we can talk a little about PostGIS so PostGIS is a or PostgreSQL SQL is a database management uh, uh, system uh, DBMS and uh, it is used uh, in very many uh, different uh, operations different companies different organizations and uh, while PostGIS itself is an extension to Postgres SQL that enables uh, working with the special uh, data sets uh, like uh, data that contains uh, location information or geometry so these uh, uh, PostGIS uh, without uh, Postgres without PostGIS you cannot be able to you know have some workarounds or manipulate some special data so that's why uh, we it's a requirement to have post gis and uh, out here you can hear it being referred to as a post gis uh, database so it's just a postgres sql that is partially enabled or that contains post gis uh, plugin or post gis uh, extension so uh, it's almost completing. It's initializing the database cluster, and uh, it may take under some few minutes there. Uh, 
uh, starting the database server. So it also installs as a service which you can start and stop under the services uh, menu or the services uh, uh, shortcut in uh, uh, Windows. Yeah, so it uh, has completed installing PostgreSQL. Now uh, it is uh, very important and it's recommended that we enable this stack builder. The stack builder is used when you want to upgrade your PostgreSQL version or the components uh, inside it as you are going to see. So this I'll leave this checkbox for the stack builder as checked and I'll click on finish and it will uh, launch the stack builder and uh, I'll use the stack builder to install post uh, GIS uh, component. So I'll just click on the server uh, whereby if you're using a remote server you can also use a remote server but I'm currently using my, uh, the local PostgreSQL server database server inside my computer so I'll select the second option which is uh, PostgreSQL on port 5432 and also if you're using a proxy you might uh, need to set up some uh, the proxy configuration so I'll click next and it will do some uh, it will bring this window that contains a list of uh, items so we are interested with spatial extension for post gis so i'll go with uh, this first option here and when i click on it you will realize that there are some things that have been shown here that come shipped with the post gis which includes the gdal that we had mentioned in a previous video the geospatial data abstraction library and uh, the geos library among others osm to pgsql and the foreign data wrapper extension for migration between different uh, from other databases so this is a uh, we'll check this if you want to install other components uh, you can also select but we are just going to work with post gis for now and then you click next and you can also set where you want it to download so i'll change my directory to my desktop and uh, yeah we'll select the folder yeah then once i click next it will uh, start uh, downloading the postgis uh, bundle so once again depending on your internet uh, speed so it, it takes some time but it's not a big a very big component uh, it's a small uh, kind of software So this, there should be a progress bar that uh, will display showing the progress of the download. Yeah, so it has initiated a download a progress bar. And uh, as you can see from the details is that it's about 333 or 34 uh, megabytes. It's not that big. So uh, once it's complete, the progress bar disappears and then we will continue next. If you want to skip the installation, you can check on that checkbox, but we will uh, proceed with the installation by clicking next. And uh, it should start a wizard. This is how the wizard looks like. We have the license. It's highly recommended that you read the GNU public license. And after you agree you can now install if you wish to create a special database sample special database you can create 
but we are not going to create it for now we're just going to install the postgis so this is uh, the path to our database the postgresql database installation location so we just proceed next and we start the installation So it should not take a lot of time. So not if you do not install the PostGIS bundle, it will be hard to create the PostgreSQL or the PostGIS uh, extension because it is dependent on this PostGIS uh, installer. So we just so we have just finished, and then after the, the installation has completed, you click on finish. Now we are going to proceed with the creating of a special database and uh, there are two ways. It's, uh, one way is that you can use a PG admin graphical user interface which is what we are going to use now and uh, you can also use the command line as well. So we are going, first going to start with the PG admin so you can open the PG admin by just clicking on the start and searching for PG admin. And it starts the PG admin uh, server. So the PG admin server runs. Uh, it runs. It's like a web user interface. Yeah, here it is. So you may need to set up some password, master password. opened the database so this is a user interface uh, the UI for the database as you can see we have a number of some graphs here on the right and we have the list of uh, uh, the, a tree kind of model of our database whereby we have the server post uh, the server name and the database currently we only have the, the only one database which is uh, the database for the super user who is Postgres so we are going to create a, a special database. So we'll just create normally by clicking on create uh, and then database. And then we can call it GIS uh, DB underscore DB. And then we save. Ah, there seems to be an issue. We try using some other name. Geo underscore db. Try and save it. So there it is. We have our database. So this is just a simple container uh, that will be storing our data. So now once you have created it, it appears here on our uh, user interface. So we'll just right click and create extension and uh, under extension we'll type in post GIS so you can select we have a number of other post GIS extensions for uh, raster for handling the raster data and SFC seagull trigger geocoder and topology so we, for now we're just going to work with the post GIS so we're going to save it and once we click save uh, you'll realize that there are some some things some tables and schema public this is uh, the default schema uh, for the t uh, database so we have under the tables you realize that we have a table containing the spatial reference uh, systems that has also been created and uh, so this is how it looks like. It contains the spatial reference systems for uh, different uh, projections. So this is how it looks like. So now the the other second way for creating the uh, Postgres uh, the PostGIS database uh, is using what we call the PSQL. 
and this is a command line so you can just click uh, start and type in psql it's going to show you this these once you have installed your postgres this psql shell you can uh, you can be able to use it so we are going to uh, log into our database so we have the server if your server is not local host it has a it exists in a given network you should type it in if you are connecting to another different database as well uh, right now i'm just connecting to postgis uh, database and the port number you need to type in your port so if your port is 2334 for example you need to type in there but if it's not if it's okay uh, if it's okay by okay i mean if it's as it's shown in the square brackets uh, then you can just type enter uh, yeah then you proceed so just put in my password and it's connecting so it has uh, connected so so this is the command line for postgres whereby you can click in or you can type in your uh, postgres sql commands and put in sql commands so right now what you're going to do you're going to create uh, another database so we'll use a uh, create uh, the sql language which is a uh, create database um you can call it geo sorry geo g o d b one so this creates the database and uh how do i know that the output here has uh, you know confirms it has created that database i can also uh list my databases like using slash l so you realize this is a database that we had created and this is a second database that uh, we have just created right now so we are going to uh, connect to geodb1 geodb1 that we have created you click enter and it confirms that you are now connected to the database geodb1 as postgres so inside it we are going to key in create extension post gis and we add a semicolon and it has created that extension so uh, to confirm these we can refresh let's refresh these bit and we see so now we have geodb and geodb1 so we have these two databases so this is the one this one you have created it right now using the command line and uh, we the previous one you have created it using the using the pg admin uh, user interface so i'll uh, disconnect from this just click slash q and uh, we have exited the shell so that is it on installing the postgres uh, the postgs uh, setting up a postgis database so we are just immediately going to go to qgis and open and try and uh, see if we can uh, read the database we can set up a connection yeah so we have opened it so now we will use our usual um, data source manager and under data source manager we have this list of items here so we are going to proceed to postgresql and we'll create a new connection so we can call the connection uh, geo db can name it as you wish the name is not uh, cast uh, you are not forced to add any there are no conditions on what name you should add so the local uh, for the host i'm using my local machine so this is a local host so once again if you are using a machine that resides somewhere in some server you will require to add the specific server on this field for the port i leave it as it is 
because that is how it is and the database can put it as a geodb and then i will leave the rest as there and then i'll do a test so i'll call our connection username is postgres then i input in the password okay and it confirms to me that the connection was successful if the connection was not successful uh, let's yeah it will uh, bring an issue it will uh, be in red it will say that it's not successful and i click ok and then i do my connect uh, connection so it has connected and uh, i'm just going to close it and on this browser panel if you, your browser panel is not active once again you can just enable it under view and uh, panels the browser the browser second browser two panel so under PostGIS, uh, if I if I do my refresh, I have refreshed. You see that there is a connection, GeoDB, and then it shows us the schema. And under the schema, we do not have anything at the moment. So this shows us how uh, that we are already connected. So we, you can either use the layer data source panel or add layer. And then you add your layer PostGIS layers, or you can also, under this PostGIS, you can create a new connection. So that's what we have here. So we are going to open our, our vector layer. And we have this Kenya map uh, .shp, a zipped shape file. So this is how it looks. It's a map of Kenya and uh, containing its uh, words at the administrative uh, level uh, lowest administrative level so this we want to add or to import this layer into the post gis database and we will do this by using there's a menu on the menu bar up here return database we will open the db manager and uh, we can use this DB manager to import and export. It comes in built with QGIS. So you can just check if we have our database. And uh, there we, are, we have it. You can see the columns that exist. So normally what QGIS does is that it creates a table. Once we click the import, you can just import your uh, layer and it will create the table but you, you have the liberty also to decide which how to name our table so i just call it kenya admin and you can choose if you want our primary key to be called id or something else the the field that is and then we have this geometry column which will be called the geom by default and then we have the source uh, spatial reference id and the target so this is also something that uh, might you might also consider when you're importing but uh, so far these are the default options and then uh, it's very important to create special index especially for large data sets because it helps in in accessing these uh, data sets uh, faster it increases that uh, it improves the concurrency when you're trying to read the spatial data so we'll click ok and then it is importing to the database and if it's import successful it will tell us import was successful and uh, once we if we click on our public uh, schema we'll see that we have a new member kenya underscore admin so this is the data that we have just imported into our, our special our data social database and when i have double clicked on it it has lo loaded it inside the qgis canvas so within the db manager let me expand it uh, we have the tables you can see that you can you know you can read the tables just like you can read them inside uh, the database database client or, or the server and then you also have a preview so this is uh, the preview of our data you can zoom in you can zoom in and zoom out and then for the tables you can you know go through them 
and uh, we also have information here. So we have the details that it's which is a table, the owner of the uh, table, pages, rows, privileges, and all that. So we have just imported this data in our database. So I'll just close the DB manager and I'm also going to remove the other layer. So let's go through the properties of this layer that we have just imported. So you see that it has, we have the name and then we have the details here, the DP type, uh, table, and then we also have the storage type, which is a Postgres database with a Postgres extension. And uh, we have all those details. So at least this is something that I wanted us to note. Likewise, I can export this layer to the, to the uh, or rather I can export this layer into a shape file or into some file in the file system. So we have this layer, so, or, or this table, sorry, we can export it to a geo package, for example. So let's export it to a geo package. Our desktop vector, we can call it Kenya admin, and we can also set up the source and the target. But by default, they are they use WGS 84 or 4326 uh, projection, and then we can also leave the rest as default. So we'll just click OK, and it has already exported. So we can remove this layer and try and add that geo package layer that we had that we have, we have just created so we have we'll open it here and we click add and when we click add you'll see that we have the other administrative boundaries and then so this is the geo package that we have just exported uh, from our post gis uh, database so yeah, so that is a, a simple way of uh, working with our, our PostGIS database. We have installed our PostGIS database and uh, imported and exported data from the PostGIS uh, database. So there's a lot of things that you can do. You can do some analysis. You can do some special queries or SQL queries directly from the database and display them on the QGIS map canvas. So that said, uh, this brings uh, us to the end of this video. So if you if need be and uh, you can let me know we can do an advanced uh, tutorial on these uh, post gis uh, working with post gis uh, and special data databases rather so we'll see you next time thank you